and uh, we will continue the uh, plenary practicals uh, bioethical part two. Uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, remember that uh, we arrived uh, in the study plan uh, to the philosophical approaches after having seen the hierarchy approach and the animal right approach in the different world religions. And now uh, you can see in the study plan, uh, which is bold, this is the part of uh, uh, this uh, uh, second uh, section. Uh, namely, you see the philosophical approaches uh, uh, after the religious approaches, uh, we will mm, see uh, Kant and uh, the Neo-Kantism, the UNESCO Universal Declaration of Animal Rights, uh, which is a theoretical right, but uh, even uh, very important. Uh, the Maybe the most important philosophical approach is the utilitarianism, because all the Western uh, legal practice uh, is based uh, on this principle. And uh, as uh, very influential to uh, persons, we will see the ideas uh, of Peter Zinger and Tom Regan. And as a uh, proposal for uh, an approach uh, which may be accepted by a future veterinarian. This may be, uh, according Desmond Morris, the animal contract. Uh, to finish with, we have to see the evaluation of pain and suffering in lower species, uh, because uh, here you will see that the legal approach and uh, the uh, and the uh, ethical approach uh, may not uh, cover each other 100% because the pain and the suffering of the uh, is uh, considered uh, in the laboratory animal science and in the legal practice only in case of vertebrates and four species of cephalopods. But what is the situation with the lower species? And uh, finally, we will see a, a possibility uh, to treat the everyday practical problems by combining ethical use and decision making. And uh, first we have to see the philosophical approach. And in the philosophical approach, uh, utilitarianism, Benton and Mill, uh, Albert Schweitzer, Neo-Kantism, followers of Immanuel Kant, UNESCO declaration, legal approaches, and Tom Regan's animal rights, and Desmond Morris, uh, contract with animals. And we start with Albert Schweitzer. Uh, the title of the book is Hommage à la vie, who is closer to the animal rights, but uh, uh, this is uh, useful in the practical life too. One cannot avoid to kill lower animals for the higher one but it may be counterbalanced, be helping the maintenance of life everywhere and every time. Uh, the lower animal means that uh, lower uh, the evolution, mm, evolutionary development, of course, it's uh, only. And Immanuel Kant, uh, lived uh, 1724 to 1804 and uh, used to be a university professor in Königsberg, uh, which 
is uh, Ost Prussia. Uh, today, uh, this is part of the of Russia, and beside the model of the cosmos and universe, uh, he mm, dealt with the ethical questions and he uh, invented, uh, uh, introduced the categorical imperative. The categorical imperative is the central philosophical concept which was introduced by Kant, uh, which is outlined according to the arguments found in his work and means moral obligation. So this is the categorical imperative or moral obligation. And this is, amongst others, so-called a priori. Uh, a priori is a form of knowledge uh, that humans may possess that is given to them without experience because it is innate or hardwired in them. In other words, inherited or uh, today we can explain that developed uh, during the evolution. The truth of logic and mathematics are claimed by some to be known a priori. For example, that two is more than one. Kant argued that some a priori concepts, such as that a thing or time must be presupposed to have an experience in the first place. So thing and time, the feeling of time, etc., these are a priori. And the main uh, central uh, moral idea of uh, Kant is the following, act only according to that maxim, whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. Act in, in the way that if you kill, everybody has the right to kill. If you steal, everybody has the right to steal. If you lie, everybody has the right to lie. So this is very... And if you are cruel with the animals, everybody can uh, do the same. And concerning the animal protection, he wrote... He who is cruel to animals becomes hard also in these dealings with man. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. And very close to his use, to his uh, uh, preamble, preamble means that uh, the uh, giving the sources and the argument uh, why this declaration. Okay, whereas all animals have rights, whereas disregard and contempt for the rights of animals have resulted and continue to result in crimes by man against nature and against animals. Uh, can you imagine that it was uh, uh, 50 years ago uh, or 40 years ago, and it is uh, uh, worse today. Whereas recognition by the human species of the right to existence of other species, animal species, is the foundation of the coexistence of species throughout the animal world. Whereas genocide has been perpetrated by man on animals, and the threat of genocide continues. Uh, if you have read uh, 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 books about the far west, western book, how the buffaloes were killed, this was also a genocide. Whereas respect for animals is linked to the respect of man for man. Whereas from childhood men should be taught to observe, understand, respect and love animals. It is hereby proclaimed. Article 1. All animals are born with an equal claim on life 
and the same rights to existence. Article 2. 1. All animals are entitled to respect. 2. Man, as an animal species, shall not arrogate to himself the right to exterminate or inhumanly exploit other animals. It is his duty to use his knowledge for the welfare of animals. 3. All animals have the right to the attention, care and protection of man. Article 3. 1. No animal shall be ill-treated or shall be subject of cruel act. act. 2. If an animal has to be killed, this must be instantaneous and without distress. Article 4. Uh, about the wild animals. All wild animals have the right to liberty in their natural environment, whether land, air or water, and should be allowed to procreate. And second, depri deprivation of freedom, even for educational purposes, is an infringement of this right. Can you imagine that uh, after uh, decades this uh, uh, Article 4 was not kept uh, in all the school, uh, thousands and thousands of frog, frogs were killed, etc.? Article 5. 1. Animals of species living traditionally in a human environment have the right to live and grow at the rhythm and under the conditions of life and freedom peculiar to their species. See the freedom for uh, to, live, uh, to live the natural behavior. Uh, 2. Any interference by man with this rhythm or these conditions for purposes of gain is an infringement of this right. Can you imagine that synchronization uh, of uh, uh, estrus and other uh, so-called biotechnological uh, interventions uh, in the light of that? Article 6. 1. All companion animals has the, have the right to complete their natural life span. Uh, it means that we should give a appropriate feeding and uh, lifestyle uh, to assure this uh, uh, natural lifespan. This is not the reason even for the human itself. 2. Abandonment of an animal is a cruel and degrading act. Article 7. All working animals are entitled to a reasonable limitation of the duration and intensity of their work to the necessary nourishment and to rest. Article 8. 1. Animal experimentation involving physical or psychological suffering is incompatible with the rights of animals, whether it be for scientific, medical, commercial or any other forms of research. Uh, according to that, no animal uh, uh, research uh, uh, in the world. This is not the case, but maybe the aim in the very future. Two, it is very uh, important, replacement methods must be used and developed. And for that we have uh, good tendencies. Article 9. Where animals are used in the food industry, they shall be reared, transported and killed without the infliction of suffering. Article, uh, modern slaughterhouse. Article 10. 1. No animal shall be exploited for the amusement of man. Okay, what about the circus? And 2. Exhibitions and spectacles involving animals are incompatible with their dignity.
Article 11. Any act involving the wanton killing of an animal is biocide. That is a crime against life. Article 12. 1. Any act involving mass killing of wild animals is genocide, that is a crime against the species, the modern hunting. 2. Pollution or destruction of the natural environment leads to genocide and a climate crisis. Article 13. Uh, in my mind, it is very important. 1. Dead animals shall be treated with respect. 2. Scenes of violence involving animals shall be banned for cinema and television, except for humane education. Humane education. Article 14. 1. Representatives of movements that defend animal rights should, should have an effective voice at all levels of government and bodies. 2. The rights of animals, like human rights, should enjoy the protection of law. And the Universal Declaration of Animal Rights was solemnly proclaimed in Paris, October 1978, at the UNESCO headquarters. The text revised by the International League of Animal Rights in 1989 was submitted to the UNESCO Director General in 1990 and made public the same year. I like to summarize the, uh, the most important uh, points of the, this Universal Declaration of Animal Rights. All animals have the same right rights to existence. No animal shall be ill-treated or subject to cruelty. Animals shall command the protection of law. And dead animals shall be treated with respect. Uh, these are the uh, most important topics uh, uh, which uh, mm, may uh, greet you uh, during the uh, test exam too, I'm sure, at least these. Ethical thinking and theory uh, may uh, use uh, uh, the different uh, notions like the direct rights, the, uh, which is uh, inherited and uh, uh, indirect rights which a human is given to the animals and uh, every lawmaking should be based on righteousness and equality but equality of what? So this is the great question. And legal approach should be uh, practicable for the everyday life situations. And we move to the maybe the most important philosophy which is uh, uh, underlying to the animal protection laws, the utilitarism. Uh, the question is not can they reason or can they talk, but can they suffer, uh, wrote Jeremy Benton, 1789, uh, in the year of the French, Great French Revolution. So the utilitarism is an ethical theory founded by Jeremy Bentham, James Mill, and John Stuart Mill in England in the 19th century that holds that acts, what I, I'm doing, acts are right, which produce the greatest amount of happiness or joy or pleasure. And this happiness for the greatest number of being affected, greatest number of, of beings. And second, that the particular act or rule being considered 
should produce more such good than any other possible act or rule. And the act utilitarism, utilitarism is a theory after that, one, what is right? This is right what has good consequences and independently from the motives. Two, maximization, the number of beings affected counts morally, uh, the number, and three, what create, uh, it is uh, a very uh, difficult uh, question because uh, you cannot say that uh, uh, we, okay, we will see later on. And three, what creates a good consequence? And the uh, the pleasure pain quotient uh, quotient is used, the more pleasure and the uh, less pain. And the more pleasure, uh, the more people involved, and the less pain uh, for people and being involved. For example, you have a serial murder, uh, and uh, this person will be executed. This is pain for one, uh, one uh, person or being, and this is a pleasure because this is a uh, so-called pleasure for the uh, whole society, uh, uh, 30 uh, million people, because it is a serial murder. So the quotient, pleasure, uh, pain quotient is uh, 30 million uh, to one. So, and we will see a small discussion. Unfortunately, we have not, as in normally we are doing that in small groups, uh, and uh, uh, after I give the description, you receive uh, uh, some time to discuss in a small group, and after we can discuss. But instead, I would propose that after I, my description, uh, you stand for, for a second to uh, think it over and, uh, and uh, uh, give a statement in yourself. And after, I will give uh, some conclusion. So in small group cases, uh, you would judge it permissible to save the five. It will the question every time about uh, uh, numbers. Uh, then state why it is permissible in those cases and not in the others. We will have three cases. Make sure that your explanation for one case does not imply the opposite of the answer you give in either of the other two cases. And the first is the scarce drug case. What is your opinion? You are this uh, doctor, and this is Mr. Blog, uh, uh, and uh, the uh, five other people, okay? You are an emergency room physician, in an inhabited island, and you have only five doses of a certain drug left. Alice, you have six patients, patients who need it. Blogs, uh, it is every time blogs is the miserable, uh, has a very severe version of the condition for which the drug is a treatment, and it will take all five doses of the drug to cure him. Your other five patients have mild versions of the condition and each of them will be cured by a single dose. Any one of the six who doesn't get the full dosage they need will die. Mm, okay, in many cases, uh, I don't say the uh, conclusion, we move to the second cases, you make a statement in yourself. And the transplant case, what is your opinion? You are the doctor here, and you will decide. And this is 
uh, Mr. Blog and the five others. Suppose that you are a famous transplant surgeon and that your transplants always work. You have five patients, each of whom needs a transplant. One needs a heart, one a brain, two need one lung a piece, and one needs a liver, or instead of brain, spleen. One of your patients, Blugs, has come in today to find out the results from some lab work, some yearly uh, blood uh, sampling and uh, uh, normal uh, analysis of the blood. Only a control. No diseases. You know from the results of the lab work that blocks would be a perfect donor for each of your five other patients on the waiting list. Uh, for example, you have seen that the major histocompatibility complex of blogs and the five uh, on the waiting list are the same. Therefore, uh, you know that there are no other available donors. Uh, so you ask blogs if he would be willing to be cut up and have his organs distributed. But blog blogs declines your kind offer. But you realize that you could easily overpower blogs by an anesthetic injection, uh, uh, energetic anesthetic injection, and cut him up without his consent. Okay, what is your opinion? And the third is the famous trolley case. What would you do? You are here uh, uh, at the switch, and five people and Mr. Block. And the description, the driver of the trolley has passed out at the wheel, and his trolley is hurtling out of control down the track. Straight ahead on the track are five men who will be killed if the trolley reaches them. You are a passerby who happens to be standing by the track next to a switch. If you throw the switch, you will turn the trolley onto a spur of track on the right, thereby saving the five. But Blocks is on the spur of track on the right, and he will be killed if you turn the trolley. Poor uh, uh, blocks are going for are uh, going for uh, the blood <laughs> sampling. Okay, summarizing, summarizing, all the three cases, considering the pleasure pain quotient, was five to one. If you save uh, the five per person uh, in the first case, if you make the transplantation in the second, and if you save uh, and kill actively uh, uh, blocks. But you see that uh, they are different, and uh, the decision cannot be allowed uh, to persons. Therefore, we need legal approaches and uh, laws for the practical life. The utilitarianism as a principle and philosophy can be accepted, but uh, in the real life, we need rules. We have to see uh, uh, some uh, word about Peter Zinger. I have mentioned in the first uh, uh, hour the book of Animal Liberation. In this book uh, is a detailed description uh, that uh, the modern humanity uh, is continuously doing uh, the so-called speciesism. Speciesism is uh, uh, if we treat other sp species uh, at a different uh, rightous level than the human species. This is similar to the racism. Uh, when we treat other people differently 
because of the color of the skin or the sexism if we treat other people differently according to the sex. In the, but in the practice, Peter Zinger uh, are, uh, is flexible, and this is mostly utilitarian. Utilitarian. And the op opponent of that is Tom Regan. In his book of the case of animal rights, 1984, Berkeley, California, University, uh, and in the excellent debate book, Carl Cohen and Tom Regan, the animal rights debate, uh, uh, you can uh, make acquaintance uh, with uh, his ideas. His idea is that uh, uh, some uh, sentient beings, some living organisms, uh, have an uh, inherent value and therefore they are subject of life, they carry the subject of life criterion. It involves more than merely being alive and more than merely being conscious. Individuals are subjects of a life. They cannot be considered as a sheer perceiving, grasping creature, particularly not a machine, as Descartes wrote. So this is the foundation or basic of the equal rights. So this is, uh, and the inherent means that uh, uh, you cannot get it. This is part of the uh, characteristics of uh, a, uh, a sentient being, a living organism. If they have believed, uh, well, these are the criteria uh, for uh, being these uh, uh, carrier of uh, and subject of life. If they have the uh, being beliefs and desires, if they have perception, memory, and a sense of the future, including their own future, an emotional life together with feelings of pleasure and pain, preference and welfare interest, an ability to initiate action in pursuit of their desires and goals. Remember your dog when uh, they want to go for a walk, uh, they show you. And uh, uh, remember the Cambridge Declaration of the uh, animal consciousness, all is related to that. Uh, subject of life uh, is a, uh, has a psychological identity over time, that the time feeling. Uh, their time feeling may be shorter than ours, but uh, it exists. An individual welfare in the sense that their experiment their life fares well or ill for them, logically independently of their utility for others, and logically independently of their being the object of anyone else's interest. So this is very important, and the uh, uh, subject of life those who satisfy the subject of a life criterion themselves have a distinctive kind of value, inherent value, which cannot be get only together with the life of a uh, sentient being, are more, are not to be used or treated as mere receptacles. And the, after that, uh, we see some animal species which is under this subject of life criterion. Uh, dolphin, apes, uh, uh, pig, uh, elephant, uh, uh, some crow and uh, uh, magpie. So uh, I could uh, cite my previous uh, uh, lecture about the uh, 
Cambridge Declaration of Animal Consciousness. And the consequences of applying these animal rights are uh, we have to be obligatory uh, uh, a follower of the vegetarianism, vegetarianism or veganism. I know personally Tom Reagan uh, uh, and uh, he really uh, uh, has a vegan lifestyle. He's a very calm and relaxed, uh, very sympathetic person. Uh, we have to avoid hunting, especially by trapping. We have to make efforts for the biodiversity and according to the, those, no animal trials are allowed. But this is not practicable for us. This is a very uh, high ethical level, but not for the everyday life. For the everyday life, uh, we more. This is also on a very high level, uh, Desmond Morris. But uh, at the same time, it is uh, practicable. Clearly, then the city is not a concrete jungle. It is a human zoo, okay? But here you can see the famous book, the front page, The Animal Contract, an impassionate and rational guide to sharing the planet and saving our common world, Desmond Morris. And here you see the Ten Commandments. Uh, this bill. So, number one. No animal should be endowed with imaginary qualities of good or evil to satisfy our superstitious beliefs or religious prejudice. For example, if you see an owl uh, countryside, uh, they told that uh, death will coming to this house. Two. No animal should be dominated or degraded to entertain us. Hmm? But about the old style circus. Three, no animal should be kept in captivity unless it can be provided with an adequate social, physical and social environment. What about the zoos? Yes. Four, no animal should be kept as a companion unless it can adapt easily to the lifestyle of its human owner. A, a big, big uh, Danish giant in a small, small uh, flat. 5. No animal species should be driven to extinction by direct persecution or by further increases of the human population. No comment, 8 million human person, and it's increasing. 6. No animal should be made to suffer pain or distress to provide us with sport. 7. No animal should be subjected to physical or mental suffering for unnecessary experimental purposes. So you see that... Uh, this is uh, more practicable than Tom Reagan's uh, rule for rules. Eight, no farm animal should be kept in a deprived environment to provide us with food and or produce. And here you, uh, I can uh, cite the five freedom uh, and the obligation and more or more obligation not only for laboratory animals, but also for pro uh, production animals. Uh, I cite for you the chain and bowl for the pig, etc. 9. No animal should be exploited for its fur, its skin, its ivory, or for any other luxury product. And 10. No working animal should be forced to carry out heavy duties that cause it stress and pain. So, 
uh, I this was the uh, and the animal contract Desmond Morris, and once more uh, to uh, uh, project for the next uh, semester when we will uh, learn together the uh, laboratory animal science and uh, bioethics that no unnecessary animal experimentation uh, is prohibited then but the necessary animal experimentation are possible we have to see uh, short the evaluation of pain and suffering in lower species uh, in order to uh, give an explanation uh, the extension how uh, which species should be uh, under the protection of the animal protection laws and you see a meta uh, analysis uh, on this picture that invertebrates vertebrates and we have six uh, criteria uh, 50 more than 50 uh, scientific uh, article papers has been analyzed and if there is a, a yes uh, conclusion we give a put plus if there is a no a minus and if there are no data or no decision nothing and we see the different parameters nociceptor brain uh, connection opioids analgetics and response to damaging stimuli and based on this analysis you can see that uh, not only the vertebrates may have real pain and uh, perceiving uh, pain but also the cephalopods and this is the reason that uh, uh, the cephalopods were included into the uh, uh, 2010 uh, 63 uh, EU directive. The previous, the 86, mm, uh, 806 per 1986 uh, uh, directive uh, extended only on the vertebrates used in the teaching and research, but the, in the new one, uh, the cephalopods are also protected. Uh, after you have seen uh, more or uh, less detailed the five, uh, five and a half approaches, uh, what about combining ethical use and decision making? Yes, it's possible. Some kinds of hybridity do seem plausible. For example, protection species and protection of individual animals, or painless killing independently from the foundation and the background. Okay. For further reading, uh, I would propose the uh, excellent uh, uh, book of Appleby and others, Olson and Galindo, Animal Welfare, 2018, third edition, CABI, Oxfordshire, Boston. And uh, here you can read the uh, data of the cited animal rights debate. And now we arrive to, to the uh, final end of the bioethical uh, topics of the plenary practicals, but I'd like to ask you to take uh, these principles with you in, the, in your private life and in your future veterinary practice. Thank you very much for your precious attention.